Ashley here, and today I wanted to show you guys how to grow your mushrooms in a liner. Over the last couple of months, I've been using a liner in my tubs, and I've definitely noticed that I've been getting fuller flushes and also even pins across the whole cake, um, which is also giving me more of a yield. So um, basically the only difference from my last video to this one is I'm gonna use a liner instead of not having a liner. So here we go. I have my fully colonized spawn bag, um, and I'm going to go ahead and sanitize my tub and the top here, and put on some gloves, try to be as sterile as possible. <clears throat> So for our first stage, what we need to do is we need to close off all of the holes of the monotub so that the bulk substrate and the colonized bag can colonize within the monotub. I have stopped using tape and started to use these plastic plugs. So I'm just going to sterilize all the plugs really quick. Um, I've noticed that with the, the tape that, um, that it seems to kind of fall off sometimes, and I'm also afraid that it's not as sterile. So I just bought these really cheap plastic plugs um, instead of the tape, and I think that they work really well, um, and I think that they're a little bit more sterile. All right, here we go. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna our liner, but I want to sterilize it first. I'm going to drop her in. I have made a two inch border on my liner, um, and I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm sure that you could definitely make it shorter or you can make it longer. It really doesn't matter. Then we want to break up our colonized spawn bag. And this guy has been colonizing for about 30 days, maybe a little bit more. And I will also be using half of this monotub in here, and then I have another one over here that I'll be using the other half with. So you want to break it up as much as you can. First, I want to go ahead and sterilize this bag before we open it up. substrate in our spawn bag into our monotub. I made my bulk substrate yesterday and I uh, pasteurized it with boiling water. So now I want to get in there and see how it feels and see if our field capacity is correct. I'm going to mix it up. I think I should be showing you here what I'm doing. So I'm just going to mix up the bulk substrate. And this is made out of vermiculite, cocoa choir, and gypsum. Getting it everywhere. And then we want to check our field capacity. So when it's like this, you just want it to be kind of dry in your hand. But if you get a, like a nice handful of it and start to squeeze, you should start to see some drips come down, which you do. Oop, there it is. And if you really squeeze, then you should get a line. Actually, this might not be as oh, as um, watery as we want it. Because you definitely don't want it drying up. Yep, so let's add a little bit of water. Let's check our other. I, have, I do have another bucket. I want to check to see if this one is at a better field capacity. Mm, this one seems a little bit more moist, but not too moist. And we'll check our field capacity. So, 
Oh yeah, this one, so I when I just barely go, I get some drips, and when I really squeeze, I get a, this one has a little bit more water, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one, and then use this other one for this other one. So, but since this one's ready, let's try to use this one. Okay, so here we go. Try again. So what we'll do, is we're gonna cut open our spawn bag and we will kind of smell it. Smells really good, nice and earthy. And we're gonna use about half of this in here. We'll get a layer of our spawn. Break up these guys. Close her up. Ta da! And now we wait. So, you want to put your monotub in a warm place, um, maybe in a darker place. If it does see sunlight, it's okay. Um, but about 70 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit um, for about 14 days, and then you're, she'll be ready to open up. So, you'll just remove the plugs, add some polyfill, and she'll start to fruit. Thank you guys for watching. Hi, Ashley here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to open up your mono tub so that your mushrooms start fruiting. It has been about 14 days and my mono tub is fully colonized. I'm also seeing a lot of pinheads so that's also another indication that she's ready to be opened up. So it's really simple to open her up. All we have to do is remove the plugs and replace with polyfill. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take these plugs out like this. And I also sterilized my hands um, before just to be careful. But when we get to this stage in the game, we don't have to be as sterile as before since the mycelium's pretty much all the way grown grown through. Okay, remove the plugs and then all we need to do is replace them with polyfill. And you don't want this polyfill to be too thick because we definitely want air circulation within the tub. If you don't have air circulation, then you'll have too much CO2 in the bottom um, and that causes your mushrooms to have fuzzy feet. Um, so as long as we have a nice um, circulation of fresh air in and CO2 and, and hot air going out of the monotube, then you should be good to go um, and you won't see that fuzzy feet. You'll have a nice, even, nice, uh, healthy mushroom pin set. And then the last thing that we will want to do is we're going to want to open up our lid and the mushrooms produce CO2, and CO2 is heavier than air, so it's going to kind of fall to the ground. And what we want to do is first we're going to miss the, the monotub, but when we're first missing our monotub, the mycelium is pretty delicate at this stage of the game. So we don't want to spray directly on the mycelium or the water is going to break through. So what we do is we just spray for the first couple of days around the outside of the tub like this, Give them a quick mist all the way around. And then 
we want to fan out our mushrooms. And basically we're just kind of displacing that CO2. Um, and you mist and you fan your mushrooms at least two to three times per day. When you wake up in the morning and before you go um, to bed at night. So once you fan for about 30 seconds, Smells nice, I like the smell. It's nice and earthy in here. That's good. Then I give another quick mist around the edges and then we will put our tub back on, our lid back on. If you noticed, um, this time I did not use a casing layer. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try it without a casing layer and what I've noticed also with the liner is we are starting to see the pins that in the middle of the substrate and I do not see one pin forming around the outside. So the liner is definitely reducing side pinning which is a good thing. So um, that's pretty much it. We opened her up and ready to go. So over the next five to seven days you're going to start to see your mushrooms fruit um, and then we want to go ahead and maintain our, the care of our monotub every day. So in the morning you want to open your monotub up and you want to spray the outside of the tub and then you want to fan it. And then right before you go to bed or maybe in the afternoon if you're home, you again want to spray your mushrooms and fan them again. Um, this is going to keep your mushrooms really healthy um, and they're going to continue to keep growing. Uh, so uh, thanks you guys so much for watching and if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Hi! Ashley here and today I'm going to show you how to mist and fan down your mushrooms and take care of your mushrooms every day so that you get a nice healthy flush. So yesterday I just opened up my mushrooms and I replaced all my plugs with polyfill and I also sprayed them down and fanned, and fanned them a little bit. But yesterday we didn't actually mist directly on the mycelium because the mycelium was pretty delicate. But today our mushrooms are really coming through and I can notice that the mycelium is a little bit hardier. So we don't want our mycelium drying out. So now we want to go ahead and mist directly on to the mycelium and I want to show you guys how to do that. So you notice here, it's very exciting. Make sure that's going good. So this was our mushrooms from yesterday and if you've noticed just all of the pins are just coming up really healthy and they're coming up super fast. Um, I mean, mushrooms can grow up to an inch per hour. It's pretty crazy. Um, so one thing is we don't want the mycelium drying out. So every day, at least two to maybe three times a day, you want to open your tub and go ahead and mist all the sides. I like to just keep them nice and moist. And then what we want to do is start to lightly spray and mist down our mushrooms. Just a really light spray. And what you will notice is that some areas that the water touches, it actually kind of breaks through the mycelium. Um, it makes a little hole, but that's okay. We still need that. We still need moisture getting into their mycelium, and we don't want them drying out. So that's probably better than the actual mycelium drying out. I also like to just spray my fruiting bodies down, um, make sure that they have a lot um, enough um, water as well. That seems pretty good. We don't want to be too, don't uh, spray them too much because we definitely don't want any, any pools or puddles of water pooling on the mycelium. Then after we mist our mycelium, we want to go ahead and just fan down our mycelium for about 30 to seconds to a minute. And if you have like a little like miniature fan, you can just kind of hold it here and and fan it down. My time lapse video. So I'm just going to fan this guy down, make sure that we're displacing that CO2 um, uh, gases that the mushrooms are, are creating and putting in fresh new um, oxygen and air into the monotub. So that should be pretty good. Then I'm going to go ahead and close off our monotub. And I never really close off the lid on the top here, like with the, like the latches. I just kind of let it freely go. And then over time, I actually might even crack it a little bit more and let to let more air in. Depending on if you see like it's too moist in there, then crack it. If it's not moist enough, then put the lid on. You kind of have to watch your mushrooms every day to see how they're doing, you know. They're kind of finicky sometimes. And show you guys this one. So I started these on the same day. Um, and this one is pinning a little bit slower than the other one. Um, 
but this one still looks really good. Um, so we got like a new one going here, a couple like little pins here. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other one. We're gonna just lightly spray it around the outside, make sure that it's nice and moist, and then lightly mist the top of our mycelium so that it has a nice water layer. Not too much. And then we're gonna fan them. We put <clears throat> just for like 30 seconds. to be perfect. Put back on our lid and sometimes I don't even like to like latch it all the way down just kind of like let it sit on there or maybe a little bit to the angle. So whatever you guys want. All right guys thanks so much for watching. Bye! Hey guys! Ashley here and it's been a few more days since I've last seen you and it is definitely time to harvest some of the mushrooms. Some of the mushrooms veils are about to break. They're like right at the cusp which is the perfect time to pick them and if we pick them before their braille breaks then they won't spore and what I've seen is if they do spore on the mycelium then no new mushrooms will grow where they spore. Usually the pins just turn black and then they go dead. So uh, here we go, let's get started. This is really exciting. So I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna harvest the mushrooms that are ready to pick, and then how to care for our mushrooms so that more mushrooms grow later. And then I'm also gonna show you how I dry mushroom, my mushrooms as well. So here we go. So uh, like I said, it's been like a couple more days, like I think two days, and this is what the tub looks like now. Kind of show you with the light. And I do have a light on it all the time because I'm constantly doing a time lapse on my mushrooms because I like I like to see them grow. All right, so there are a few that are definitely ready to go. Um, and particularly, maybe I'll we'll put the light on. Like this guy and this guy, this guy, this guy are all, their veils are about to break. So when we harvest these mushrooms, they're pretty sturdy to the ground. And it looks like I have a little bit of fuzzy feet going here as well, which means that I don't have enough circulation in my, uh, in my tub. So there's just too much CO2 sitting at the bottom. So which means that we just need to fan our mushrooms a little bit more. Um, so here we go, we're gonna go ahead and harvest this one. And I like try to be very delicate when I'm taking it from the mycelium because I don't wanna pull a lot of more mycelium with me. So what I do is I kind of like delicately twist the mushroom a little bit like this. And sometimes you're probably gonna get the mushroom that grows with it. Ah, so perfect. So if you look here, this is exactly where you want your mushroom to be. The veil is just starting to break. It's perfect, excellent, really exciting. Okay, so then what I do with the mushrooms, and I'll probably take the light off, is I just set them on a paper towel. I do not have a dehydrator. If you do have a dehydrator, definitely use them because they uh, contain their potency better if you dry them faster. Um, but since I don't have a dehydrator, I just put them on a paper towel and then after the first day, after their spores break, you'll have like kind of like a splash of spores on the paper towel. Just lift them from the paper towel and, you know, flip them over for the next day. And then I let them sit out maybe for five to seven days until they get pretty dry. And then I put them in a mason jar and store them in a closet with no light. And really they'll store for at least a year um, if you properly dry them. So uh, next, let's go ahead and harvest a couple more mushrooms. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one, try to take it so that it doesn't take the one right next to it. Ooh, and that one's really good too. This one, literally, the veil has not broken at all, but it's right where you want it to be. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and probably take this guy. Mm -hmm. This one. Ooh, sometimes I'm a little bit too too much. I took a lot of mycelium there. That's probably, see we had a couple more pin heads going, but the veil was like really like delicately. Here, let me see if I can show you. It's super delicate like right here. So it's literally about to break. 
10. And then look here. This one actually looks like it might be there too. <clears throat> oh, yep. The veil actually broke on this one. You can see that. Um, as of right now, that's probably all the ones that I want to pick. Um, I'm going to wait, and I'm at my house all the time, so I can kind of watch them grow and pick them as needed. Um, so we want to continue to care for our mushrooms. We want to make sure that there's enough moisture in there. So when they're in their colonization stage, you want the humidity to be about 80 to 90 percent. When they're in this uh, fruiting stage, you want the humidity to be about 70 to 80 percent. Um, so we're just going to spray the outside of the tub, and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the mushrooms and the mycelium down. At this point, they are really hardy. The mycelium is pretty hardy, and we want to give them a nice dose of um, water. And then we want to fan them down. So after we spray down our mushrooms, and you don't want to spray your mushrooms where you see water pooling or puddling on the mycelium. That's bad. We just want to lightly spray them. And then to displace some of that um, CO2 and to let some fresh air in, we want to fan our mushrooms for like 30 seconds, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And we're trying to prevent um, this fuzzy feet from happening, which like right here, you can kind of see that the mushroom is starting to, you know, have some fuzzy feet. Uh, it's not terrible, uh, but like this one doesn't really have any at all. So, to prevent the fuzzy feet, we just got to put some air, air circulation in there. So there you go. Those guys are ready to go. Ah! Ah. Having all kinds of problems today. Okay, so there you go. These guys are ready to go. Um, and I am gonna just lightly put the, the, the lid back on. I'm not gonna close it down so that I make sure that there's a bunch of circulation in there. So these are our mushrooms so far that we harvested. Uh, they look great. And then usually what I do is I just take some scissors. I'll show you. Okay, so usually what I do is I just take some scissors and I just cut off the end. And then after about, I don't know, five minutes, the end will completely turn blue um, from the bruising. So go ahead and chop these guys. Get that substrate off of there. Oh, this one's already starting to turn blue. Looking good. Little baby one. <laughs> so, it's our fresh harvest from today, and this guy is blue. Looking good. The veil hasn't broken yet, and we want to keep it like that. They say they're more potent when the cap doesn't fully open. So, um, but if they get to this point, that's totally okay. This is like right where you want them. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. You can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks a lot. Bye. here and it has been about another 24 hours and it looks like my first flush is ready to be completely harvested. So I'm going to show you how to harvest the mushrooms as well as continue to take care of your monotype so that we have more mushrooms come up. So here we go. Um, you can kind of see our mushrooms here. They're looking pretty good. And all of the ones that you see that are a little bit, I guess, lighter brown, the veils have broken and, they've, and they're ready to be picked. Some people like to wait for the veils to break a little bit. Some like to pick them right before they break. Um, I like to pick them like right before they break or right after they break to try to prevent spores from sporing. Um, because what I've noticed is if the spores 
spore on the mycelium, no new, no new mushrooms will grow in those areas. Usually what happens is the mushroom pins will come up and then they turn black and then they die and then they never, they never finish uh, producing. So um, here we go. Let's go ahead and harvest our mushrooms. So you can kind of see all the places that I've already harvested mushrooms um, that are kind of, you know, little brown spots. But you can also see if you look a little bit more in here, they're actually new mushroom heads inside these little holes that are starting to come up again. So we want to go ahead and remove the ones around them. This one right here, I know for sure the veil has broken. So when we harvest it, I like to just kind of slowly break it off of the mycelium. And if you've noticed here, the veil has completely broken and come off, but it doesn't actually look like it's spored yet. It's perfect. And then I just put mine on a paper towel because they don't have a dehydrator. And then about seven days later, they're pretty much completely dry and then I put them into a mason jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick all of these mushrooms. Oops. Um, this one, the veil has almost broken. It's really close. That one's break. That one's broken. <clears throat> yeah, all these little guys look like they're broken off. And then I kind of left the end of that one there. Sometimes I like to take out the substrate because what I've noticed if you leave the mushrooms here, they just start, this is one from like a couple of days ago and they, and no new mushrooms will kind of grow in those areas too. So I kind of like to displace the mycelium or the, the substrate just a little bit. And then I have a whole group over here and I'm gonna grab this whole group together. There we go, I kind of ripped out the mycelium there, but that's fine. And if you notice every single one of these, all of the, the veils have broken. Yeah, and even these little ones are starting to break as well. So, and these guys, so. Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm gonna throw this, oh, now that I've taken it out. Oh, this one is really thin and you can kind of see here. So I'm looking here. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is remove everything else that's kind of in this tub. Um, and then we'll wait for our second flush. Um, I think that one, yeah, this one actually has already broken. These guys, ooh, I took a lot of the mycelium here, but let's kind of look here. You can kind of see like inside here are all the new little pins and I just ripped them from the substrate. So that happens sometimes. All right, okay, the ones that are left, I'm gonna pick this one to see what it looks like here. Oh, it's pretty thin too. Sometimes they actually do grow at the same rate, even though one's like way smaller than the other. I've also heard that if you pick them before the veil breaks, maybe they're more potent, but I'm not really sure that's true either. So there's a lot of, a lot of facts about mushrooms that, you know, you just really don't know. These ones are just now coming up. Those ones are pretty new, but all of these lighter ones have been here for a while. Oh yeah, and these ones have actually all broken their veils. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick them all. <laughs> Why not? These ones look a little bit not as fresh. All right. So the ones that are in there as they sit, so I've got a kind of cluster here. These ones, if I kind of press them, they seem pretty firm, like they're still growing. Okay. So that's, this is the harvest right now. Pretty good. I'll have to clean up all these guys on the ends and just cut off the, the substrate and then let them sit out. So in order for our mushrooms to stay at their perfect humidity, so I wanted to show you. So at this point, my humidity is 99% and the temperature inside is 67.2. Um, so that's pretty good. We want our humidity to be around 80% and our, our temperature to be around 70 to 77% or 77 um, on our temperature while they're fruiting. 
when they're colonizing, we want it to be a lot more humid and a lot hotter in there. But in this stage, they don't need it as hot. So for us to get our second flush, we're again gonna spray down the tub. I like to spray down the edges. That kind of shows me like the next morning how much humidity is left in the tub. And then I go ahead and spray down the, the substrate. At this point in the drain, the substrate is pretty hardy, um, but you can kind of see from me misting it, maybe not so much in the, the view here, that it, it's got like some places have a little bit of a blue tint, um, kind of where it's just bruising a little bit from the, from the water. Now, if we were to put a casing on this, the casing would kind of take the brunt of the spray, so it actually kind of protects the, the mycelium a little bit, but that's okay, we're not doing any casing, so we just wanna be a little bit more gentle when we're spraying it down. I also like to spray my fruits, little mushroom guys, because they like water. All right, we're getting ready. That should be pretty good. And then we'll put on our lid again, and hope for more mushrooms. I do see actually a bunch of mushrooms coming in here for like a second flush. I mean, they're just little tiny guys poking up all over the substrate. Here's one like right here. Here's another one. Um, so from my previous tub, I did this tub about a week ago and I mean, it actually produced twice as many mushrooms as this one. I'm not really sure why that one produced so much more than this one. I think maybe because I just put more of the bulk subs or more of the spawn bag in that mono tub instead of splitting it within two mono tubs. Because here, I actually ended up splitting one spawn bag into uh, two different tubs. So here's my other tub. And this tub is looking pretty good. Uh, but it's actually not producing as many mushrooms as this one. Uh, let me put it in over here so you guys can see. All right, so here is the second tub, and we've got some big ones. Like, this is a pretty big guy that's coming up, um, and it looks like it's a little bit fuzzy at the bottom, so maybe there's not as much circulation. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot, is we want to make sure that we fan our mushrooms that we bring new air in. So I didn't, I didn't remember to fan this one. So after we spray it, I like to fan it down just for like 30 seconds to a minute. Dude, I forgot to do that. And it should be good to go. All right, so we'll go ahead and spray this guy down. And I haven't picked any mushroom from this tub yet. Um, and they're kind of coming sporadically throughout the tub too. The other reason I think that they're growing at different rates is because I put like all the mycelium that I had in from the syringe. So it's got rhizomorphic and tomentous mycelium, which makes the mushrooms grow at different rates. Um, so maybe if you try to grow out your rhizomorphic mycelium, you can get a more even flush. And I've been trying to do that and hopefully we'll be able to post a new video on it. So um, again, we just wanted to spray our tub down and then fan it. Trying to be delicate so we don't bruise the mycelium. And then this guy is really close. You can see this guy over here. He's super close um, to being picked maybe another day um, and he'll be ready to go. And you can kind of notice the difference in the colors of these two. Uh, these ones are a lot like lighter in color and these ones are a lot darker. So like when they start uh, coming in, they're darker, and then as they mature, they get a lighter color. So just from my experience of what I've noticed. All right, guys, that's it. That's how you grow mushrooms. If you have any questions, please feel free to put um, comments, uh, put any of your questions in, my, in the comments. You can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. I will also try to keep videoing these to show you how the second and potentially a third flush will come out. Thank you. Thanks for watching.